Uh, some analysts would like to see this as only an attack uh, or a war against Hezbollah, but clearly this is not only that. Uh, this is also a war against Lebanon, a war targeting the civilians of this country, and most importantly, this is a war against a regional or perhaps an international order uh, that Netanyahu would like to alter so that Israel can survive uh, with impunity in the region. Uh, I strongly believe that any analysis that reduces the conflict uh, to merely a conflict between Hezbollah and Israel is, uh, on the one hand, a way to decontextualize the conflict itself, uh, which uh, we all know has started uh, decades ago, even before the creation of Hezbollah in the early 80s, and on the other hand, uh, is a way uh, to absolve Israel, uh, intentionally or not, uh, from any responsibility uh, for committing crimes against uh, civilians. So what happened in Lebanon this week is very clear. Uh, this is an indiscriminate attack killing. Uh, Israel uh, is maiming and terrorizing an entire population uh, with no consideration to who a fighter is or not. Israel is obliterating the homes and depopulating uh, people. I, I personally cannot analyze uh, what's happening in Lebanon uh, without linking it directly uh, to what has been going on in Gaza uh, for uh, nearly a year now. And we all know that uh, Netanyahu has benefited from an unconditional green light uh, to commit a genocide in Gaza. And he would like to continue unapologetically uh, the killing in Lebanon. Uh, on Monday only, and in the span of a couple of hours, Israel killed at least 600 civilians. And this is a war crime, and we should all uh, emphasize that. Uh, we all know that the state power in Lebanon uh, has been compromised uh, and Lebanon is considered by some as the epitome of state weakness. Uh, but let me clarify something very important here. Uh, this is not just because uh, the traditional leaders and political parties of this country uh, uh, have over the years uh, hollowed out state institutions and effectively become uh, themselves state competitors, uh, taking on uh, roles that are traditionally uh, and uh, typically reserved for the state, such as the one of uh, defending uh, the borders. Uh, in fact, I would also like uh, to flag up uh, a very important factor here, which is the role of the international community in further uh, weakening uh, the state power uh, in Lebanon. Uh, uh, for years and years, the international community have called upon the state to assert uh, its sovereignty uh, over the territory. Uh, but uh, surprisingly, this international community has never stepped up to, armed, uh, uh, to arm the Lebanese uh, armed forces. Uh, in fact, it's one thing to call for the army to be deployed in the south, as per uh, Resolution 1701, but it's a completely different thing uh, to call for the Lebanese armed, uh, to, to equip the Lebanese armed force in order for them to defend uh, Lebanon from uh, potential aggressions uh, by Israel. I'd like to remind everyone here that uh, Israel during the last uh, uh, two decades has waged at least four wars wars uh, against Lebanon in 1993, in 1996, in 2006, and now in 2024, and has non-stop continued to violate uh, the Lebanese airspace. So I'd like to emphasize here that, of course, everyone would like the state to exert its sovereignty over the territory, but perhaps not everyone would like to equip the army in order to defend the territory from the Israeli aggressions. Uh, well, it's not a secret that Hezbollah's arm uh, has been a very controversial topic in the recent years, hence the entrenched uh, polarization in the country. Uh, however, despite these differences, uh, uh, be it political or even ideological, uh, there is near unanimous agreement among the Lebanese that Israel's actions are deeply problematic, based on the fact that it has always uh, relied on violence and bloodshed uh, to sustain itself. We've seen it in Gaza for a year now, and we're seeing it now uh, in Lebanon. Uh, in the past week, uh, we have witnessed remarkable solidarity among the Lebanese people. This is not new. Uh, Lebanon has a long history of coming together in difficult times. Uh, while Israel may be betting on dividing the society by uh, highlighting uh, some minor tensions here and there uh, by pitting part of the Lebanese against Hezbollah and its supporters. Uh, what we are seeing shows how solidarity can indeed transcend uh, political and sectarian divides. Uh, I would like to uh, 
uh, highlight that what's happening now uh, does not only concern Lebanon. Uh, this is a whole region that is being reshaped. There is a new regional order uh, in the making. And I truly hope that this humanitarian solidarity can evolve into a broader uh, political unity among the Lebanese. Uh, Israel thrives on division, uh, and we must all work towards building societies that reject this division and instead prioritize collective strength. Uh, this is a call for Lebanon to think how we can live together in peace uh, without, despite our differences, uh, without resorting to violence, all the while acknowledging that Israel does not want peace or prosperities for countries like Lebanon and the region.